that's just great. Welcome to Laguna Tools. My name is Jay Andrews, and today we're going to talk about our new computerized panel saw. Now, there are many types of CNC machines on the marketplace, and some of them are beam saws and some of them are routers. This happens to be a CNC machine that is a sliding panel saw. And this is a 10 and a half foot uh, panel saw, meaning that the table is 10 and a half feet long. And that allows you to process both 8 foot sheets and 10 foot sheets and 5 by 5s and just about any type of wood that you want to put through it. And even without the computer system, this would be a fantastic panel saw. And if you look at the construction throughout, and we're going to go through those details, you'll see that the fit and finish on this saw is just absolutely extraordinary. All the little attention to details, the feel of the tables and of the flip stops and all the different components, the knobs and everything, are just absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's a 10 and a half foot slider. Uh, this saw is a 7 and a half horsepower three phase motor on it. This has scoring as well. It'll take up to an 18 inch blade on this saw. Now this is an aluminum sliding table on the machine here and the work surface is 15 inches wide. Now this table is hard anodized and the hard anodized surface is a great work surface. It's resistant to scuffs and scratches and is absolutely a perfect work surface uh, for all your woodworking projects. And you'll notice that it has a lock on the side. This is the neutral position. It's locked there. Yeah. For me to release it, I simply flip this down and I'm able to move the table quite easily. And coming back to that lock position, I'll flip this up and it simply locks in. And there's a lock in the neutral position. There's also a lock in position out here and we call this a load lock. So when you're loading sheets of plywood, and you bring this all the way out to the loaded position, it'll lock in in this position as well. You can load your sheet, unlock it, and slide on in. If I flip this up, when it gets to the neutral position, it'll actually lock. If I'm using it for cutting sheets of plywood, I'll leave that down and slide it all the way through the blade. Now while we're moving the slider here, you can see just how effortless this slides back and forth and how it just glides back and forth. And there's a number of reasons behind that. First, you'll see these hardened steel shafts right here. And the table rides back and forth on these on a double, what we call a dumbbell system. And you'll see this roller assembly in here. And we call this a roller bogey here, or some people will call it uh, a dumbbell because it, rep it looks like a dumbbell. And the table rides back and forth on this. Now, there are wipers, little brushes that go through and brush the dust off of these rollers and keep them clean so that it rolls back and forth smoothly. Now everything on this table is double boxed and that's particularly important because some of the less expensive saws on the marketplace will save money by doing a single top surface. Sure it might be just a little bit thicker but it is a single surface and it has a lot more of a tendency to be able to flex. Now, As with many table saws this one has a miter gauge and this is a little bit larger than some. We actually call this a miter fence assembly and you can see the miter gauge right here on the side of the machine. You'll see the anchor point, which is a fixed point right here on the machine as well. And this fixed point is set from the factory, but should you need to adjust it, you could actually loosen the two little Allen wrench uh, or Allen bolts right here and slide it forward or back to get it exactly at 90 degrees. Now to install the miter cutoff fence here, we're simply going to remove this handle. It loosens, it slides right off. We're going to slide on the stop. And this is a nice polished hard chrome steel shaft right here. That slides on and that's going to be our pivot point. This is going to come in, drop right in the center pivot, and I'm going to loosely thread that on. This will slide over and come up, and then we're going to install the handle. That'll spin right on. Now I can lock this down here or snug it down. I'll leave it a little bit loose so I can adjust it. I'll line it up exactly at 90 degrees and I'm ready for a 90 degree cut. Now the miter crosscut fence here actually has a flip stop right here and this is a nice piece of heavy aluminum on here and it has a lock handle here and a lock handle here. And This is adjustable. It slides in and out and simply locks in position. It can also be telescoped out. Now to do narrower panels this simply slides out, flips around, and reinserts. Now to make angled cuts on this machine you simply loosen the lock handle, loosen the inside handle, and this can be brought back. It goes from 90 degrees all the way to 45 degrees backwards. It also goes to the front side and not only does it go to 45 degrees, it keeps on going. And I can go all the way up to 30 degrees in the forward position for some really tight angled cuts. 
And as we move down the table, we'll step down here for a moment, and you'll notice that right here, there's this little protrusion. It looks like a hex head. This is actually a magnet right here, and this magnet will hold the swing arm assembly into the side of the machine. This is very useful if you've got the uh, cross-cut table off of the machine and you want to run the machine in a little more of a narrow profile for doing rip work or uh, work that you don't want to have the table on for, the swing arm can be folded into the side up against the magnet and held firmly against the side of the machine. Now we've moved down to the far end of the sliding table and this is what we call the cross-cut table and it's supported by the long swing arm on the bottom here. Now this is a standard mitering table or standard cross-cut table. There is an optional mitering cross-cut table as well, where the entire table moves on parallelograms and allows it to be pivoted in and you can actually miter on this table. It's available with a digital readout. Now, of course, on the standard table here, you see this support rail and this is a nice long aluminum support rail and this is used to support wide panels and if you've got the panel out here, you want some extra support so you don't have to balance the panel. Now, this can be adjusted simply by loosening the knob on the bottom and moved at different locations up and down the entire table assembly here. And you can see that these ride back and forth on this nice metal strip right here rather than riding on the paint and chipping the paint on your machine. We mentioned that the fit and finish of this machine, machine is absolutely flawless and it's right down to little details like this that really make this machine a standout. So I'm going to run this back in the neutral position right here. I'll lock it back down and I'm ready to put a big panel on here. Now this is the fence assembly for the crosscut table and this is a very nice heavy duty extrusion that uh, is bolted down to the table. Now, this has two positions. This is the rear position, which is toward the back of the machine. There's also a forward position. You'll see that there's a pivot pin right here. This is actually the adjuster block outside here. And there's an adjuster on both the forward position and the rear position. The reason that you have a forward and a rear position on the saw is that, let's say you're cutting some small panels, some shelves or something like that, and you want this to be toward the front of the saw so you don't have to walk all the way back here. Now, this fence has many standout features on it, and one of the most subtle but yet one of the most important ones that I find when working in the shop is the placement of the tape on this fence and it's instead of set flat like a lot of them are it's actually tilted toward the operator side of the saw and if you've ever read one of these tapes in your shop you'll know that if it's pointed forward it's a lot easier to uh, to use you'll also notice that it's both in uh, millimeters in the metric and as well as in inches and that's got uh, graduations down to the sixteenth of an inch uh, on the tape so you've got both scales right on the front and tip toward the operator. Also, the magnetic strip for the digital readout is inlaid into a recess on the top, so it's not going to get dinged or dented when you're using the machine or disturbed at all. Now, the fit and finish on this fence is just absolutely flawless. There's no rough edges to catch on. Even on these little flip stops right here, you'll see that they're actually bead blasted for a nice smooth surface finish here. They go backwards and forwards very easily. They're on nicely machined brackets. There's even some really nicely machined push, pull stops here that allow these to come into position and to actually lock into position. These are very nice. You'll see also the shelf on the side here. It's got a little shelf on the back and on the forward side. And this catches the edge of the panel as you're bringing a panel up. And usually in this position, you don't need it too much. It's when you telescope the fence out. Now to telescope it out, I'll simply loosen the knob on the inside and slide it out. And that's where that uh, catch pan there comes in handy. Now the readout, the digital readout for the far stop is actually done on this stop right here. You've got a 60 inch difference between the stops. You'll actually read that right here. This has a digital display right here. I'll turn that on. And as I move that back and forth, I can read it right here for both for the inside and the outside stop. This is a digital flip stop assembly. And it has this lock pin that allows me to lock into the rail that slides out for the outer stop. Or I can simply pull that up and slide this independent of that rail as an inboard stop. It's a digital display. It reads both in millimeters and in inches. And you've got the, uh, the self-centering and the adjustment knobs here or buttons as well. Now one of the standout features of this flip stop assembly is visible right here. And this is the micro adjustment assembly. When I lock the handle down, and let's say I'm trying to dial this in here, I can micro adjust this and get right to the number I'm looking for and then I'm ready to go.